All right, guys, welcome back to All Things Outdoors. And also, please be sure to watch this video till the end. And also, please be sure to watch, to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Be sure to put that down in the comments below saying that you did that for a shout out. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started. And also, if you have any ideas for future videos, put that down in the comments below as well because I'm interested to hear um, if you guys have uh, any video ideas because I may use them if I can. But anyway, without further ado, let's get started. So here we have um, some wild edibles that you may not know about and also how to go foraging. So here we have a couple wild edibles. We have many in this meadow right here, actually. Uh, one of them is already right here. So you may recognize these. They're those spring onions that a lot of people hate, but the, you know, the onion grass that a lot of people hate because they think it looks ugly. But anyway, it's actually a wild edible, not this top, not this top flower head, but the bulb underneath in the ground. Let's pull it out if I can. They're very deep rooted. Yeah, can't really pull them out. Let's try a different one. Uh, oh, here's a pretty good sized one, I guess. I don't know if I'll be able to get it because they are, yeah, I can't get them. The soil's too hard and dry. You haven't had much rain at all lately. But yeah, but anyway, the bulb underground is, uh, it is edible. So you can use it for other things. I will say it has a very strong garlic taste. Here we have the Allegheny blackberry, and we're gonna tell you how to forage. So, and also first for the onions, how to forage. So basically you're just gonna kinda wanna look around and look for the big stalks. Like the bigger, the thicker the onion stalk is and the taller it is, the bigger of onion it'll probably have underground. So yeah. Um, so just kinda looking around in meadows and like for it maybe forest edges and meadows and maybe even in your yard and gardens yards and gardens and stuff you can also look from there if you want to but they probably won't be that big because you if you cut them or pull them out they'll be pretty tiny if you pull them out a lot but if you let them grow they are they do get pretty big anyway here we have another wild edible that you may know about you probably have seen it probably buy it in the store all the time we have the Allegheny blackberry, and these are very important in blackberry product production. This is actually the plant that they use to make blackberries, and it's pretty cool. But anyway, um, you can find these in meadows, on forest edges, and they like a lot of sun. So if their area has a lot of sun, generally there may be blackberries if there's a lot of brambles and briars and stuff. Just so you can tell because it's got these nice canes, which are green and they have big thorns on them. So watch out for the thorns when you're foraging for them. And you just kind of want to look around for, you know, meadows, fields, old fields, meadows, uh, and forest edges for these plants. And they generally like a good amount of sun. And also they make edible berries basically from uh, mid June to basically in August, they make a lot of berries it's, it's incredible and when you find blackberries you want what you're looking for when you're picking them and looking for them is you're looking for big blackberries so see don't eat these red blackberries these are not ripe um when they're ripe see they got this nice blackberry look to them just like the ones that you buy in the store and also they should look pretty big and if they have a and if they're hard like see like these red ones and these very early black ones these are very these have a very they're very firm but these uh but the other ones ripe ones generally feel a lot uh not really squishy but they they don't feel nearly as firm they feel like a lot juicier and yeah see they look like this and mm, very nice sweet flavor to them and you know you can eat them right off the bush um, and a general rule is to try to make sure they're at least waist high 
uh, because animals and stuff could go all over them and you don't want like animal you don't want animals touching your food here we have some other big juicy blackberries these ones not all of them are ripe but mm, a good amount of them are and they are good very sweet, got a nice texture and flavor to them. They, uh, they are perfectly ripe. And they are fresh as fresh can be, right off the bush. Mmm. Well, I don't really want to interrupt my snack on all the blackberries, but... We are going to show you guys another wild edible. So I'm just going to get on my bike real quick. And we're going to ride up there. It's not very far. I mean, the whole thing is not edible, but parts of it are. Sorry about shaky video. If there is any. It's probably shaky. Because I'm on grass. It's not the smoothest. Now we're on the road, so it shouldn't be as shaky. But anyway, uh, here we have another wild edible you may know about, uh, but you most people don't. Um, this is the uh, bayberry bush, the bayberry bush. So a lot of people have this planted ornamentally in their gardens or in yards and stuff. And a lot of people grow it. And it's known for being, and it is native to Eastern North America. And they grow in sandy soil. That's They like to grow in sandy soil. And they like, um, they like a good amount of sun, but they can tolerate shade. And they're pretty easy to find. Very dense. As you can see, extremely dense shrub. You cannot see through it. Uh, but it also has, you may be able to see them on these branches, all these little bay berries. And these are not ripe yet. They're blue when they're ripe. Very pretty color. And they um, are actually used as um, a spice in many other uh, countries and other parts of the world. And even in America, sometimes these are used as a spice, which is pretty cool you can put them in certain foods as a spice or a seasoning and you can also i want to make bayberry essential oils not just for the health benefits just for the smell because they smell so good when they're crushed see if you crush these leaves mm, they have a very nice smell and it reminds me of the beach because a lot of time because we're right next to a beach and Every time I go past this bush, I think of the beach because I come to the because every time I go to the beach, I pass the bush. <laughs> and it's a very nice bush. It's absolutely lovely. Um, but also, if you have if you find any berries and you don't really know if if you don't fully know what they are, do not eat them. Like see, this is Moro's honeysuckle. And you may think, ooh, these berries look juicy and tasty, but these are actually highly toxic. Uh, only birds can eat them. And they are, and the bush itself is invasive here, and it's spread by birds. Uh, but yeah, the berries are very pretty though. I will say, although poisonous to pretty much everything but birds, they're very pretty. A nice button bush here. But anyway, we're going to move on to um, some other wild edibles. Alright, so now we're, we have a different wild edible plant. Uh, this is the wineberry. I have featured it in a previous video. Be sure to watch that video too. Uh, actually, a couple previous videos. Hmm. These are good. Perfectly ripe. Mm. 
are so good. So these are wine berries. You can tell what they are. So they basically look like raspberries, but they don't have any, uh, they're like a red version of a blackberry, kind of. They kind of look like in between a raspberry and a blackberry because they're shiny and raspberries kind of have that fuzz on them. But they, uh, but these also are smooth. So yeah. But they are not black like a blackberry. Mm. They are good. Um, but anyway, you can find uh, wine berries usually around woodland edges, like on, on the side of a road or even in the woods. Uh, they are non-native, but they tend to grow as kind of an underbrush plant. And they make many canes here. And what will happen is these canes will come up and then if they touch the ground and then the ends will droop. And then if the ends of the canes touch the ground, and they can actually grow a new cane. It's pretty cool. And after a little while, old canes die, fall off, but new canes keep growing. So we basically we'll have an infinite supply of wine berries. And they kind of, and they basically start to ripen around the end of June. It's like maybe like not completely end of June, like maybe like in between mid June and the end of June. Um, and then they're ripe usually around, that's when they start to ripen. And then they usually, and the berries are usually, like they, they the plants stop making berries at around, uh, say kind of mid July, around uh, July, uh, like in the 15th around there, like 20th, something like that. It's about the time that they stop making berries. Um, and, and when you're foraging for them, what you want to look for is you want to look for these kind of canes that have very nice uh, fuzzy leaves of three. And they have these kind of hairs, but some of these hairs are actually thorns. But a pretty good bit of them are just hairs. Um, and you want to be looking for kind of on the, like on the side of the road or on, uh, in the woods or in forests or basically anywhere with forests and these like and these like shade they these will tolerate more shade like these can grow in partial shade to uh these can grow in from basically they like to grow in partial shades so like this dappled shade created by these trees here the wine berries absolutely love that um and they will grow very well here and these are edible. They have a nice sweet, but a kind of a tart flavor too. And it's very good. And they go, and they go good with a lot of things like cereal, or you could just have them by themselves. And I wonder if you could like make a uh, wine berry yogurt with them. That actually would be pretty cool if you could do that. Mm. And as they get riper, they start to have more of a sweeter taste, but ouch, got poked by a thorn. Oh, but anyway, they're not a super sweet berry, kind of more of a tart berry. They're more tart than they are sweet, but they are very good. Anyway, uh, that's going to be about all for today's video, so yeah. so pretty. Berries are beautiful. Lovely red. But anyway, that's going to be about all for today's video. So once again, be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Be sure to put that down in the comments below saying that you did that for a shout out. And we will see you guys on the next adventure. But before you go, um, I am going to tell you uh, that tomorrow I am leaving to go to Minnesota for eight days and I will not be back until next Thursday uh, late at night so I probably won't be able to post something until Friday 
Um, and yeah, and there's no cell service out where we're going. We're gonna be canoeing in the boundary waters of Canada, but I am bringing a camera, so I will be able to film some videos, hopefully, so I can post them when I get back. But yeah, so sorry about a lack of videos in the next eight days. But yeah, we will see you guys on the next adventure.